Now we will have the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Stan, for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to join the subcommittee for today's hearing on a topic that is critically important to the people of my state of Arizona. I wanted to be here because Arizona and Phoenix and Tucson in particular were the largest cities in the United States without access to passenger rail service. As other communities have gained access to passenger rail, they've experienced significant new economic opportunity as well. But Arizona has missed out thus far. I'm hopeful that that will change. And there is reason for optimism. Amtrak has proposed connecting Arizona's two large and fast-growing metropolitan areas, Phoenix and Tucson, with frequent and reliable passenger rail service. That means opportunity for the people of Arizona, opportunity to connect our communities, make them more accessible and productive, and more internationally competitive. Opportunity to boost our regional economies with better access to jobs and more private investment along the route. Opportunity to ease congestion along Interstate 10 and help reduce air pollution. Arizonans have wanted passenger train service between Phoenix and Tucson for decades. So it is no surprise that this proposal has already generated significant local support. The mayors of Phoenix and Tucson and other communities along, with, along the proposed line, they're fully on board. And I would like to include for the record, Mr. Chairman, their letters of support. Without objection. Thank you so much. I have a question for Mr. Gardner, president of Amtrak. The infrastructure plan, by, plan that was passed by this Congress invested in passenger rail. And Amtrak CEO called the bill absolutely transformational. That means the American people, including those of us in Arizona, we rightfully have big expectations. Mr. Gardner, given the lack of passenger rail between Tucson and Phoenix, and the strong local and regional support for the project, as well as the significant resources provided to get the job done under the infrastructure law. What steps is Amtrak taking to advance and accelerate the development of the Tucson, Phoenix, West Valley rail line? Thank you, Congressman, and um, we wholeheartedly share your enthusiasm for this corridor. As you noted, Phoenix is fifth largest nation, uh, city in the nation and is not directly served by Amtrak. And those are the kind of omissions in today's network that we uh, fundamentally need to address, and we're so excited by the investment in this bill to do so. Um, as, as I mentioned before, the, the next steps to develop this uh, plan for quarter development across the country is with the Federal Railroad Administration. And we are going to be providing all of our input, the entire Amtrak Connexus plan and all of the underlying data to them. Additionally, we are looking to uh, advance partnerships with uh, Nevada and, and, and the two big cities and other communities to start taking our planning and moving it to the next level of granularity. Uh, as you know, we've got a uh, existing Union Pacific route that heads to Phoenix that needs to be upgraded for service. Uh, we have the existing uh, route that we operate over on today's Sunset Limited uh, to uh, Tucson to the east. So we have part of that route in place. And what we need to do is really focus in on that Western portion to get us to Phoenix. Uh, but we're, we're all in on, uh, on this project in terms of our excitement, enthusiasm, and, and really are ready to uh, partner with uh, the state and the communities to start that next phase of planning and then be ready to uh, go after opportunities with um, the Federal Road Administration as they move to the grant funding uh, and the further planning stages. That's great, and I certainly will help be your partner when it comes to advocating for this line. Uh, I know that Amtrak is gonna keep its word that it made to the people of Phoenix and Tucson uh, as you were advocating for passage of the infrastructure bill uh, to get the job done. I think a fair question would be, assuming we're successful in the grant process and uh, getting that approval process through the federal government, uh, assuming Amtrak keeps its word about your advancing the planning process, what would be the timing, best case scenario, the timing of beginning this critically important line? 
Well, uh, Congressman, I think we, we've got some more work to do before we can know that exactly. A lot of it's going to depend on Union Pacific, who's the owner of the railway, and the need to upgrade that infrastructure. Also, we've heard a lot from communities about investing in stations. That That's going to be critically important and is something that could happen uh, soon. But we need to work with that host railroad, Union Pacific, to get a good plan forward. So I think that's a critical step, is getting Union Pacific on board to work with us to advance this service. And um, that's going to really set the pace. For, for for the overall service. We'll be working on our side to make sure we've got the equipment ready and, uh, and the other things that we can bring, but we need that willing host railroad partner. All right, Mr. Chairman, my time is up, so I yield back. Thank you very much.